Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Creative Adventures. So this summer, we decided to replace all of the outdoor cushions on our patio seating. Our patio furniture was given to us as a gift by my mom when we got married and bought our first house in 2012. And we had a rooftop patio that got direct sunlight all day long and it had no cover over it. So over the couple of years that we lived there, the cushions got very bleached and moldy from all of the rain and all of the moisture. So two summers ago, I was able to prolong the cushions for just a little bit longer by actually just spray painting them a color similar to what they already were, which was bright orange. But when we bought our new house this year, we realized that they were just too far gone to save. So we considered actually just throwing them out and completely replacing the cushions, but I learned real quick that that is very expensive to do. Uh, so I opened up a couple of the cushions and found that the foam inside was not damaged at all. It wasn't moldy, it wasn't torn, it wasn't dirty, it was in perfect condition. It had been protected by the covers, it was just the covers that were nasty and needed to be replaced. So I bought a bunch of outdoor fabric to make new cushion covers myself. Now I've never sewn anything like this before. I have done sewing in the past. I've made aprons and uh, costumes and clothes, but I had a pattern for all of those things. So this is the first time I tried doing anything that I didn't have a pattern for, which it is just a box cushion, so that sounds pretty simple, right? And it mostly is. The zipper panel was a little bit tricky, but I did get one cushion completely finished this summer, and here's what it looks like. Very, very happy with how it turned out. Uh, there's the zipper panel. It's just a rectangular box cushion. So I was very, very pleased with how this turned out. And then for whatever reason, I set the project aside and didn't pick it back up again. I don't know why. It's just one of those things that I never got around to doing because I had so many other things I wanted to do instead. Uh, but today, Chris was actually cleaning out the basement, our shop area, and he told me that that foam, the stacks of foam down there was driving him absolutely crazy, so I promised him I would pick this project back up and try to get all of these cushions finished, so that's what I'm doing now. So here's what the old cushion covers look like. As you can see, they are faded and there's staining from just mold and dirt and they're pretty grody looking. Uh, so the only difference between these cushions and the cushion that I made was that these have a piping on the border. Um, I probably could have done that if I really wanted to, but they're outdoor cushions. I don't really notice it and I don't really think it adds enough to it to spend the time it would take to add the piping to my cushions. Um, personally, I think this looks just fine as is. So we have a whole sectional set and then we also have some separate chairs and the red fabric is for the chairs and then I also have this green fabric for the sectional. Um, and then I have a bunch of really pretty pattern fabric for making just some square throw pillows to go with the set. One other thing I wanted to point out, in the interest of saving some money, I actually am reusing the zippers from the previous cushions too because zippers are also kind of expensive and I had trouble finding enough matching zippers of the right length because these are really long. Um, I had trouble finding enough matching zippers to actually go with the whole set. So it dawned on me, I, there's nothing wrong with the zippers on the existing cushion covers. They are perfectly fine. So I am ripping those zippers out of the old cushions and reusing them in the new ones. And that is what I did here, worked like a champ and saved me some money. So the only material I had to get for this project was the fabric itself and the thread. Now the thread I'm using for this project is also a heavy duty 100% polyester thread that is rated for outdoor use. So it should hold up pretty well in the weather as well. Now I have already cut out all of my pieces for each cushion. I have an entire stack of fabric already sitting over here cut. Um, what I did was I took all of the foam pieces out of the cushions and these particular cushions are three layers. There's a thick foam in the middle and then a lighter foam on each side. So I took them out of the old cushions and I measured the foam itself. So I cut two pieces, two rectangular pieces for the top and bottom of the cushion. Um, I added a half inch seam allowance all the way around. I cut four of the box sides. So two of the short sides, these are rectangular cushions. So you've got two short sides and two long sides. 
And so my short sides, two of those, and two of my long sides. These also have a half inch seam allowance. However, for one of the long panels, for the one that's got the zipper, you want that to be the height of your cushion, which these are three inches, plus your seam allowance, so that's a total of four inches, plus the width of your zipper. Now, when I cut out all of my pieces for all of my cushions, I did not take into account the width of the zipper. So for every one of these, I'm going to have to recut one more panel for the zipper side that accounts for the width of the zipper. We all make mistakes, right? So first things first, I'm gonna take my next cover and I'm gonna rip the zipper out of it so that we can start on the next cushion. All right, that zipper is out. So I still have a lot of the thread in here, but perfectly good zipper. No reason not to reuse it. Perfectly good zipper. Now, the width of our zipper is one and a quarter inches. So for the side panel, the side box panel that is gonna have the zipper, remember it needs to be the total of the height of your cushion plus an inch for your seam allowance plus the width of your zipper. So these panels are four inches because it's a three inch cushion, but our panel zipper panel will need to be five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut out my zipper panel out of this leftover fabric that I've got. Okay, so now we've got our bottom, our top, our two sides, the top of the box, and the bottom of the box. So now the fun part. Let's get sewing. The first thing we're going to do to get our zipper sewn into our zipper panel is we're going to fold this panel in half and we're going to sew down the folded edge half of the width of the zipper, which for the zipper will be 5 eighths of an inch. So we're going to fold it in half and we're going to sew down this folded side at 5 eighths of an inch or whatever half of the width of your zipper is. Now that we've got that seam sewn, I just took a pair of scissors, so here was our seam, I took a pair of scissors and cut down the middle of the fold all the way down. So now we've essentially got two pieces of fabric that are sewn together at 5 eighths of an inch all the way down. Alright, so now we are going to open up this piece of fabric and it should be noted that this is the right side of the fabric this is the wrong side you can't really tell with this fabric since it's solid color and it looks the same on both sides um, but we're gonna be looking at the wrong side of the fabric where this weird little seam is that we just sewed and cut through and we're going to open that up so that it's flat and we're gonna spread that open all the way down and what we're gonna do is take our zipper and you want the open part at the bottom where the pool is. You want your zipper closed and the pool at the bottom. And we're going to lay our zipper on top of that seam and sew it down, all the way down from bottom to top. So basically from where the closed end is to where the pool is. Now you want to make sure that your zipper is centered over the seam and we will sew down both sides. So let me switch to my presser or to my zipper foot and we will do that. Now when you get to the end you may have to stop and pull your fabric out just a little bit so that you can move the zipper pull out of the way. So we're going to go back to the end that we started on and sew down the other side. And you do that by, well with my machine anyway, I assume that most of them are similar. You do that by moving your presser foot over to the other side. So we're just going to repeat that same process down the left side of the zipper. to sew across the end of the zipper a couple of times on both ends 
uh, just to make sure I've got a good stop there. So now that we've got our zipper sewn in, we're going to rip that seam right down the middle and that will expose our zipper. down just a little bit. As you can see, our zipper is now exposed. Ta-da! So I pull that down just a little bit and then I'm going to sew across the end of this to make sure I've got a good stop. Alright, there is our zipper panel. Alright, next we're going to take one of our bottom pieces Hold the phone. I lost a piece of footage here. Oh no. Um, so the next thing I actually did was I took all of my box sides, starting with my zipper panel, and I sewed them together on the ends, leaving them unattached at the very end. So essentially I ended up with a very long strip of box sides. So I sewed together my zipper panel to one of my short sides on one end, and then I took that short side and sewed it to the next long piece on the other end and then I moved it down and I took that final long piece and sewed it to the final short piece that I had. Uh, I didn't sew those last two ends together to actually complete the box. Uh, I left them as one big long strip so that's where we're picking up here. So carry on. And we're going to center this zipper panel over it, over the long edge or one of the long edges. Uh, right sides together so your zipper should be facing down and I actually am going to pin this to make this a little bit easier. I don't often pin things as I'm sewing, I'm a rebel like that. But in this case the zipper tends to uh, ruffle it a little bit so it's a little easier to do this if it's pinned. Alright so I've got my zipper panel now pinned to one of my cushion backs and we're just going to start about a half inch in because that's going to be our seam allowance on this side. So we're going to start about a half inch in, in and sew down to a half inch from the end. Now we're going to continue sewing like this all the way around this panel. And it's easier to do this sometimes around these curves if you cut into your boxing. And just kind of snip it to help it stretch around the curves right there. So this is kind of awkward since you're already sewn together, but you're going to take so we've turned our whole panel around, so the long side is this way now and the short side is facing us. And we're going to take this boxing and just kind of fold this zipper part back. And I've got my presser foot up right now. We're just going to fold this part back. And because we snipped that corner, it actually makes this process a little bit easier. And now, as you can see, our two short sides are lined up. So do we're going to do the same thing and just sew all the way down this edge now. Same thing, lift our presser foot up, we're going to snip the edge of this boxing. We're going to turn our fabric so we're on the second long side. We're going to spin our boxing out of the way. Now we've got our two long sides paired up. Drop our presser foot back down. And the last side, same thing. We're going to turn our fabric. Snip into the edge of that boxing. our boxing back out of the way. And press your foot down. 
Now, as you get to the very end, you want to make sure you have this edge of the boxing folded back because you don't want to sew that down. That would be very bad. So make sure that's folded back. We're going to sew right up to this seam of the bottom piece and the zipper panel. Okay, I'm going to pull that out. So now we have most of our first panel sewn to our boxing. As you can see, it's starting to take shape. Right now it's like a drawer, an open drawer. Uh, but we do still need to sew these two ends of the boxing together. Um, so we're just going to match those up, right sides together, and sew right down them. All right. There is our corner. It's not perfect, but it's, it'll do. It's an outdoor cushion. <laughs> I am not a seasoned sewer. I am a fairly beginner sewer, so this is proof that a beginner can do this. All right, now, let's see if I can spread this out a little bit so you can see what we're working with. It's inside out right now, but this is what we have so far. We have most of our cushion done. We just have to add the last panel to the back and then it's done. All right, so first things first, we're gonna be sewing this right sides together so it's gonna be inside out. So you wanna make sure that you've got your zipper open so that you can turn it back right side out when you're done. Um, so we're gonna take our last panel and I have this upside, or I have this right side up. So this is the right side of the cushion or the cushion cover, we're going to take our right sides together as you normally would and center along one of these edges. I'm going to do this long edge first, I think. So we want to center up our two pieces and to start, I'm going to pin this first piece because that again will just make it easier because we've got this corner we have to deal with on the end so line these up find my centers and that's where I'm going to put my first pin is right in the center and then I will work out from there with my pins. Okay. So I've got my right sides together and they're pinned all the way down this long edge. Now when I start sewing, I'm going to start again half an inch in. I'm going to start at this seam for these other two pieces of the boxing. So here's my two pieces of my boxing sewn together. There's the seam that sews together my boxing. And I'm going to start sewing this panel onto this edge of the boxing a half inch in where that seam begins. All right, and as we get to this corner, same thing as before, we're gonna stop at the seam. And we're gonna lift our presser foot up, and turn our fabric. And press your foot back down. take it out and see how we did. All right. So I'm actually going to trim some of these extra threads because they make me crazy. They make me crazy. I mean, if you really want to get fancy, you can, you know, and you have one, you could like serge the edges of these. I'm so not going to do that. I do like finish my edges for like clothing, but not going to happen for this. Now we have an inside out cushion cover. Let's turn it right side out and see how it looks. Okay. I am pleased. I am pleased. 
used rice. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it acceptable? Absolutely. Let me get my corners all poked out here. That's pretty good. I even did better on this one than I did on the first one. I'm gonna be a pro at this by the time I get to the last one because we got a lot of cushions to do. That's part of the reason I've been putting this off for so long. Because I just have so many. Alright. Zip her up. Let me go grab the foam for this one and we'll stuff it and show you what it looks like finished. Alright, so here is what the foam looks like that goes inside of these. Again, I did not buy new foam. I'm using the foam that was already in there because it was still in really, really good shape. As you can see, it's clean. It hasn't uh, degraded any. It hasn't smushed any. It's in really, really good shape. So I'm just going to repurpose this into these new cushions. finished box cushion for our patio furniture. Two down and a whole lot to go. These are just the tear backs. <laughs> I think I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six more of these chair backs to do. And then a total of seven seats to do and a huge ottoman. That's how many more I have to do. So 13 more cushions and an ottoman cushion. Oh, and a bunch of pillows. Anyway, okay. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has given you some ideas on how to recover your patio cushions instead of going out and spending all the money purchasing new ones, especially if the foam inside is good. And double especially if you've got existing zippers that are good because there is no sense in letting that good material go to waste. Um, so I hope you give it a shot. hope you enjoyed this watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. And um, yeah, if you've got any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time on Creative Adventures.